it is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today we're going to focus in on a really crucial important and profound concept today and that is the role of displacement when it comes to really understanding why it is so difficult to release and let go of the pain the blocks the rumination the sort of paralysis that keeps people stuck in wounded relationships or furthermore attracting wounded relationships to them and their life and they're not really where they want to be but before we do this i want to give a huge shout out to those of you who have recently made a donation to the peace and harmony channel including a very lovely gentleman we have in the netherlands it's such an honor and privilege to be able to reach out to you in the netherlands here from the s and I really appreciate your thoughtfulness and contributing to the channel because it's support from viewers like you that keep me inspired to keep it up, uh, keep going, keep getting in front of you here and providing important information and resources and concepts for you to really understand and work through some oftentimes very debilitating and confusing relationships that you might have experienced. So thank you so much for your recent donation. It really is an inspiration and I have so much gratitude. So once again, um, we're going to zoom in and focus in on a very important concept and that is the concept of displacement. Uh, Freud um, in the early days was really um, invested in psychoanalysis concepts and sort of understanding how relationships work so he's really the forefather of psychology it's a fairly new science um you know we have all sorts of um you know different philosophers you know from the greeks you know all the way you know um you know through history and um really you know we have to understand and i really want to um sort of focus in on some very important concepts that are psychological in nature, and that is of displacement. Now, displacement is um, it's satisfying an impulse with a substitute object. So this can take place not only from the individual who's involved in a relationship with a narcissist, but as a narcissist as well. And displacement might mean, um, you know, for example, um, you might be um, the actual cause might be something other than that which you are experiencing. So for example, you might have had a bad day at work and so you yell at the kids or you yell at your spouse or you know you're frustrated that you lost your keys and so you yell and blow up at the locksmith who comes to save you. So you end up displacing, in other words, giving somebody a whole lot of negative uh, projection, um, emotional um, reactiveness to them and they did nothing to trigger you. So we're looking at really what is triggering, what is the cause. This is really the answer to so much and I really believe in giving the answer because if I can give you the solution, you'll really be able to save yourself months and years of suffering. And so it is, let's just look at the, you know, the example of losing your keys and freaking out, yelling at the customer service rep who answers the phone to get you help, freaking out and yelling at the locksmith who comes to, you know, basically in, you know, 30 seconds pops open your door, here's your keys, you lost them on the back, you know, you're yelling at them, why do you take so long, why do you charge so much, you know, you can just be blowing up at them. That is displacement. You know, your frustration at yourself for losing the keys is now on an innocent, you know, an innocent target. Your frustration at yourself is now, you know, blaming the customer service, blaming the locksmith, blaming your insurance. It's blaming on the external world. So that is really key to understanding displacement. And this can be part of the issue of why it takes people so long to either heal from a uh, narcissistic wounding relationship, psychopathic wounding relationship, not seeing the answer, not thinking clearly, not feeling clearly, not making being decisive and making healing choices. It's all very convoluted, but this is really, really important and crucial concept. I mean, this will save you so much time um, and relationship issue if you can really um, understand this because displacement oftentimes is the reason why people not only attract but stay stuck in and really sort of ruminating in 
these triggering relationships or stay triggered by the person even after they are gone. And that is because oftentimes there is a, an underlying cause that's really permeating the, the base. And you have to acknowledge that this is a very human condition. So you cannot feel bad, guilty, inferior, weak, um, have an inferiority complex or have like an identity issue because it is, you know, to have this experience is human, but to reduce its, you know, its predominance in your life will, will really um, help you. And this is actually work, emotional work, psychological, cognitive work that you can do that will really help release a lot of anxiety and stress and pressure from within that oftentimes is keeping these hurtful relationships in place or keeping the uh, wound in place, if you will. It's like a trigger. Um, a trigger is something that sets you off and it, it continues to stifle you or stunt your, your growth, your happiness, positive relationships, how you evolve in your career. You know, that is what we call a stunted growth or a self-limiting belief. And displacement oftentimes can be a trigger in the narcissistic relationship. In other words, it could have kept it in place for too long. That little voice that said, you know what, this is not going to work. I need to get out of this relationship. But instead, you push you know, the voice down, which is repression, which means pushing it down or suppressing it, you know, which means to kind of keep it muffled, but it's still kind of there at the surface, that's suppression. But now if we look at the role of um, a defense mechanism, which is called displacement, it is because there's a deep-seated fear of abandonment or insecurity that keeps an inadequate or not fulfilling or positive productive relationship in place. And it keeps you projecting your need to have this person in your life. It keeps that feeling, it keeps that dynamic in place. So for example, and a lot of people will say, oh my God, peace and harmony, you know, that is right. You know, I can see that now, but sometimes you can't see it now until either A, we're discussing it in a very neutral um, environment and where you don't have sort of also understanding, you know, sorting things out, which is what we're doing here. And also guilt can keep the relationship in place. Guilt can keep the the wounds tr and, and the keeping the triggers in place. In other words, which keeps you set off, which keeps you, you know, making bad choices or feeling negative, feeling these negative feelings of being isolated or isolating yourself or that whole ripple effect can oftentimes, it is the undergirding foundational feelings of abandonment as well as guilt that keep those um, negative feelings and negative relationships in place. So if you can surrender those, you will stop engaging in the psychological concept of displacement. And so just if we can look at it again, it's just, you know, it's a temporary lapse of judgment or perhaps a chronic lapse of judgment where, you know, you realize now why there's a, a, a cause that has created this effect in your life. So we want to eliminate the cause of this issue. So for example, if the cause stays in place, you're continually going to find yourself ensnared, tangled, um, you know, feeling left out, feeling isolated, um, being attracted to these types of people who don't validate you, who don't give you an experience of love, which is really, if we look at understanding what love is, true love is, is free of fear and characterized by non-attachment. The great um, uh, Dr. David Hawkins, MD, uh, PhD, in um, psychology among of a, a, a number of other disciplines. And disciplines is really what we're focusing on right now here is disciplining this. And he, he definitely states that love is characterized by non-attachment. I'm gonna say it again. Love is characterized by non-attachment. So in other words, you don't have a fear of losing this person. You don't have a sense of possessiveness you're not trying to constantly control the outcome. You're not constantly having to monitor, be suspicious, um, feel as if um, 
you know, things could go awry. So I have to over obligate myself. I have to give this person a number of gifts to keep their love in place. That's just conditional love. That's oftentimes fueled by insecurity, which is fueled by fear of losing this person, which is fueled by the trauma bond. It is fueled by fear, the over obligation, um, the, the, uh, compensation, um, you know, of, which oftentimes then the, the flip side is the emotional manipulator will capitalize on this in a relationship. In other words, they will see that you are kind of messed up and, you know, you've heard the phrase maybe, or I'm going to, you know, they're messed up in all the right ways. In other words, my wounds, you know, are complementary to your wounds. So then... You know, basically, you know, the wounds begin to complement each other in this sort of setting. So the wounded um, person who has a fear of abandonment, a fear of guilt, a fear of, you know, being and needing this type of narcissistic person, you know, will keep that relationship in place for way too long. Um, we see this in children of alcoholics, children of abuse, children of narcissistic parenting where they have not had their developmental needs met, they have not been receiving the message that they are loved, that they are lovable just the way that they are, unconditionally, remember our definition of love, which is unconditional, and um, love is free of fear and characterized by non-attachment. So true love allows you to love without fear of loss without fear of you moving, you know, you, you're not, you're not, uh, you know, kept in the, um, the ties that bind, you know, um, you're not, you're not stuck in, um, a conditional relationship where you have to do this, you have to do that, you are indebted to us. So oftentimes in these dysfunctional relationships, it's this trauma bond, it's, you know, you are going to feel guilty if you do this. You are going to feel guilty if you live your life. You are going to feel guilty if you're feeling you're positive, if you're smiling. You're feeling guilty if you're expressing yourself, if you're expressing your sexuality in a positive, healthy way. You know, it's like the clamp, clamping down of, of the, the cause oftentimes in that sets this up into place. In other words, it's the nuclear fusion, if you will, it sets up the bomb. I don't want to use that word, but it sets up the experience, you know, to have this sort of um, dynamic in your life and then kind of explode in your face or present pain um, in your everyday life. Life is, is has its trials and tribulations, it's, it's up and downs, but when your life is characterized by more pain than pleasure, you know, then, you know, we have an issue. Um, yes, there's health issues, but you need to work on these. Yes, there's mental health or, you know, uh, situations that need to be dissolved, worked through emotional, psychological, you know, cognitive thoughts, cognitions that need to be worked through. Um, that is what we're doing here. And um, I really thank you for your support so that I know that we're getting some groundwork and really we're really making traction here because that is really what it's all about is really plowing through this getting it resolved, not having this take years of, um, you know, wondering and, and just sort of suffering, nameless, you know, suffering, um, you know, uh, just we need to resolve this. And that's my whole goal of the channel here is to have you understand that love is not characterized by attachment. Love is characterized by non-attachment. So when you think now in the safety of this channel here and the safety here of being able to explore this, if you look at relationships where you have truly experienced love to be the case, you might oftentimes feel that it's characterized by non-attachment. And um, and so, and knowing that it's also characterized um, by a, a cessation of fear or not imprinted by fear, that there's a sort of um, acceptance, there's a sort of uh, feeling of okayness, if you will. There's not a feeling of having to control and condemn you or cause you to feel guilty for living your life or being who you are or expressing yourself or having that sort of productive um, experience in life. Um, um, you know, it's free of fear. So 
um, you need to then surrender this this, this cause or what we call displacement. So um, if you are then you know in this um, imprint of a relationship with a narcissist or a psychopath, who if you have oh, you've had to displace a lot of energy onto this person or onto the relationship to keep it intact, to keep it you know at bay, um, to keep it together. Um, because it's been permeated by a lot of fear, a lot of control, a lot of selfish needs, which uh, the narcissist is displacing onto you because of their insecurity, then you need to be able to let go of this need of displacement. So your fear of abandonment, your feelings of guilt that you know you need to work through and resolve and say, okay, so maybe part of what I am doing is keeping the pain in place because there is a payoff to depression. There is a payoff to insecurity. There is a payoff to um, emotional pain. And that is to keep you stuck in the, the cause, you know, to keep you stuck because you there might be some issue of abandonment deep within yourself that might have been set up early on or a setup of insecurity or an inadequacy that could have been set up early on. So we need to get into that gunk deep within the past, clear it out like a brush, brush it out, sweep it out, clear out that whole area that is causing the, the that to be set up. So really, you know, you now need to wash that clean, dissolve that, and now come back to that state for yourself, which is like reparenting or keeping, you know, the more matured mind in place to let go of that fear, let go of that sense of I've been abandoned or let go of that guilt that perhaps I had something to do with this issue. Taking responsibility, accountability now for yourself 100% and say, okay, it is what it is. That was what it was. I look at that finally, I really want a sense of nostalgia. Um, and I'm looking at with a state of learning now, this was perhaps one of the greatest lessons learned in my life. And so now I'm furthermore exploring that and I'm getting this on the books. And we talk about that full, really sort of healing system that we talk about. Um, and I'm just gonna go long here, if you will, um, because we talk really about how important it is to now take pen in hand and really rewrite the blueprint of what your, what your future is. Because oftentimes if you're in a relationship with a narcissist or a psychopath, you are not able to have or feel a future that you have to look forward to. You feel that it's constantly caught up in trying to stay admired or emucked in a lot of this negative feeling, which is becoming more predominant in your life. And that is, um, I will have you here to say that that is not how your life is meant to be lived in emotional pain, um, stress, you know, that needs to be that you need to have a release of that. And that is all coming from within. And a lot of people they are, you know, they, they have not heard that they don't understand that. And I'll have you say that, you know, if you were to write the word stress on your wall and you were to have stress written maybe four times on your wall, you would begin to feel stressed. If you were to have an image of what stress means to you and you were to put that up on the wall, you would begin to feel stress. You would feel pressure. You would feel force. You would begin to become reactive. You would just because the body would enter into fight or flight. And this can be like a picture on the wall. This can also be a person. And so this force, this pressure that they have displaced and then maybe targeted you, scapegoated you, um, singled you out for supply, that is like a trick, what we call a trigger. So if you were to write stress, I'm just going to grab another notebook here. And we're just going along here today. Um, remember our positive? I am so excited to do my healing. If you were to write this, and I under, I explained to you how important it is to have the what well, uh, the written word as well as um, images around that um, exemplify this to you, you need not want to have this um, in place for yourself. 
So when we talk about um, the, you know, the expression of the positive around us as well as the negative, you need to consciously, meaning having an awareness, like I'm doing this now, like I'm taking action, not just like, ah, eh, you know, life is just taking me for a ride. My life, you know, my identity is just to be a victim. I'm powerless over this and powerless over life. You know, I'll constantly be staying in this dead end job or this dead end relationship. I'm powerless over it. You know, that's wrong thinking. That's negative. I just came up with something here, a concept that's ne negative orderly direction, nod thinking. I'm going to write that down. That was a huge, um, I'm going to put that concept in the book, nod thinking. I'm going to write this down. Bear with me one moment. Negative orderly direction thinking. And because this is very um, oppositional to what I call POD, positive orderly direction thinking. Positive orderly direction thinking. Pod thinking. So if you want to kind of get a grasp on a concept, pod thinking versus nod thinking. Nod is negative, negative orderly direction thinking. So if you can just, you know, when you see people go like that, like this is ridiculous, let's call that right now. We've just created this concept right here. That's, and I'm, I'm going to be um, trademarking um, this. And there's a lot of concepts that I'm really putting forth in my book, which are so crucial. But you have to understand that your thoughts are called cognitions. And thousands of these cognitions, thoughts, create your feelings, which is your emotions, and keep your emotions stuck in place. So if you have a lot of nod thinking, negative orderly direction thinking, it's taking you in a negative place. Remember we talk about the treasure map and where your thoughts are taking you and it's giving you, you know, it's taking you on a trip. It's either talking you to, you know, taking you to a beautiful cliff where you're, um, you know, seeing a beautiful sunrise and you're breathing deep and you smell the fresh, clean air and you take a moment to you know, admire a bird, hug a tree, pick up a pine cone, look at a flower, have admiration for life and gratitude. And you breathe in deep and your, you know, chest, you know, goes up and you're, you know, high, you know, hydrating yourself and oxygenating yourself. You know, that's pod thinking, positive orderly direction thinking. You're filled with energy, vitality. You know, your, your cells begin to tingle a little bit. You're, you're enhancing, you know, the um, oxygen that's going to your organs which is expressing your DNA, which is expressing health within your body. If you are engaged in surrounding yourself with neg uh, negative orderly direction thinking, which is stress, and you're running your life by the hormones of stress, and we're going to write it again here, um, and we're just doing this in one shot. If you were to surround and put up on your wall four words that say stress, 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 how long would it be before you begin to have a backache? How long would it be before you begin to have a headache? How long would it be before you begin to have neck uh, displacement? You know, where your neck is so stiff and sore, grinding your teeth, um, anger on your face, Urgh. you know, how long would it take? And then think of your, think of an image which, um, you know, is indicative of stress to you. Um, you know, whatever stress would be, um, you know, um, Versus positive orderly direction thinking. What is positive and life enhancing to you? Remember we talk about the I wants and surrounding yourself with an image that in your environment which surrounds you with what you want. Positive orderly direction thinking. It can be the image of the type of idyllic person either that you want to be or you want your mate to be or your house or your trips or your vacations or, or your job. This can spread out into all areas of your life. Positive orderly direction thinking or negative orderly direction thinking. Which are you going to take today? Which are you going to follow up? And again, once and again, we reinforce our words written in our images on the wall with our Dayminder calendar. If you do not, even if you live in the Netherlands, if you, even if you live in the UK, even if you live in Australia, we have viewers in all those countries, you can look on eBay of your country and find a Dayminder. 
And you need to get yourself this small investment, which will reap you huge leaps and bounds to not only your life quality, your health quality, your employment quality, your relationship quality, your spiritual quality. You need, if you are, you know, struggling with this healing, you know, at, or this pain in your life, and you're constantly feeling a victim, you need to get yourself a day minder. And what I'm recommending is reinforce your pod thinking, positive orderly direction thinking with your written commands into your calendar. So we're just, and I have a number of these. You're going to flip way ahead, okay? And let's just say you need to feel safe and secure and inspired. So I want you to schedule in like an emotional schedule. Yes, that's what I said. You need to have an emotional schedule for yourself. Just like you show up at a job, just like you show up, you know, at a dentist appointment or perhaps your videos here or your phys you know, your physical therapy or your doctor, you know, you need to have an emotional appointment with yourself. And I want you to write in, for example, I want you to have this and I want you to refer to this and make sure you're checking in and you're showing up emotionally the way you need to show up. So for example, we're scheduling ahead and you can schedule ahead a month or two. I don't, you don't need to schedule out the whole year, but do it month by month. So let's just say, for example, you're scheduling ahead and we're into December, December 7th and at four o'clock. And you need to be feeling, feel inspired, feel confident, and maybe uh, in that morning you're going to put feel safe. And you can black out at least an hour or two to feel that way. So no matter what happens, you are feeling safe. You are feeling inspired and you are feeling confident. And I'm going to show you here. Um, so for example, feel safe, feel inspired. And then if you want to take it a step further, you put a little smiley face for yourself, feel safe. Whatever, you know, you might want to draw a picture of a boat. Um, whatever it is, you know, um, or a lighthouse, whatever it is, is indicative or image wise that causes you or triggers you or prompts you or you equate with feeling safe. You need to put that in. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, maybe it's a peace sign. Maybe it's a calm lake. You can even, you know, cut out a picture from a magazine and glue it in. Um, feel inspired. You might have the image of a um, shooting star. You know, um, feel confident, you know, and then underline it. And then, you know what? When you show up, you're going to feel inspired and feel confident. You are scheduling it in and you're like, you know what? Um, I was doing this and this that day and I look at my my emotional calendar and I had feel confident and feel inspired and you know what? I showed up. No matter what I'm doing, I feel confident and inspired. I could be showing up for the shower. I could be showing up to do my dishes. I could be showing up to do my uh, lawn work. Whatever it is that I have going on that day, I'm showing up feeling inspired and feeling con uh, feeling confident. Likewise, if you were to do the opposite and write, you know, feel stressed, feel less than, feel disempowered, and you were to write that in, and you were to constantly have triggers in your environment, which direction would you have, would you have gone that day? You take this moment by moment, minute by minute, you know, and minutes become days, which become weeks, which become months, which become years, and now can you see why a whole block of time had been basically, you know, sucked, sucked up by a malignant person? Do you see how they can keep you in that negative orderly direction thinking, that nad thinking, where you're shaking your head? No, you're feeling unhealthy. You're feeling sad. You're feeling disempowered. You're feeling angry. You know, you're suffering um, and it's always still hurting. That is an excuse, which is caused by the original place of the original concept of displacement, which we started earlier in this video which is causing you to keep that negative pattern in place because of your original cause, which is that fear and that attachment. If you can dissolve the fear and dissolve that and begin your positive orderly direction thinking of your cognitions, which are what we call thoughts, that is your cognition. You have this, you own this, you have a mind, which then, you know, 
puts your thoughts and your perceptions together and causes the feelings, you will then begin to cause more positive feelings to evolve and generate within your body and your life will change forever. It is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.